The early years of the European Cup were dominated by three nations, Spain, Italy and Portugal. Real Madrid won the first five editions of the tournament, with Benfica and Inter Milan picking up two trophies, and AC Milan winning one as well. But the competition soon began to open up. Celtic would win the competition in 1967, and were followed the next year by Manchester United. Two new nations had a European Cup winner, and in 1970 there was a chance for another. Feyenoord reached the 1970 European Cup final, where they would be up against Jock Steen's Celtic. Ernst Happel's side had the opportunity to become the first ever Dutch side to win the European Cup. This is a story of the 1970 European Cup final, Feyenoord's shot at glory. Feyenoord Rotterdam were founded in 1908 as Wilhelmina. Over the next few years, they underwent a series of name and kit changes before establishing their name as Fire Nord in 1912 and deciding on playing in red and white shirts with black socks. Before Dutch football turned professional in the late 1950s, Feyenoord won a series of league titles and cups. The introduction of professionalism in Dutch football signalled the dawn of Feyenoord's golden age. They won their first Eredivisie title in 1961, although they lost to Tottenham in next season's European Cup. They would continue to sweep up trophies over the next few years, including League and Cup doubles in both 1965 and 1969. In 1969, they had set the Eredivisie alight, losing only three games, and Swedish striker Ove Kinvall scored 30 goals along the way. Feyenoord parted company of coach Ben Peters at the end of the season, aiming to hire a coach of more experience to guide them through the European Cup. They would appoint Austrian coach Ernst Happel as their new manager. Happel had managed Addo Den Haag for seven years and won the KNVB Cup with them in 1968. Happel was keen to use his tactical knowledge to take Feyenoord to the next level, deploying a 4-3-3 formation and basing his team around the likes of Vin van Hannigam, Franz Hansel, Cohen Maugelin, Rhinus Israel and Ruud Giels. In 1969, Ajax became the first Dutch team to reach the European Cup final, but they would lose to AC Milan. Feyenoord were keen to go one better. Feyenoord would begin their European campaign by travelling to Iceland, where they would face KR Reykjavik. The result was never in doubt, with Feyenoord storming to a 12-2 win in the Icelandic capital, with Kinvall netting a hat-trick and Giels netting four. The return leg at Dekoip was routine, with Kinvall and Giels both netting twice in a 4-0 win, to go through on the back of a 16-2 aggregate win. However, their next tie was in no way comparable. They were up against holders AC Milan. The Milan faithful believed that they would easily find their way into the next round, and as a result, only 17,000 of them attended the San Siro for the first leg. AC Milan won 1-0. For the return leg, however, 60,000 fans packed out De Coip to cheer Feyenoord on, in hopes of an upset. An early goal from Vin Janssen brought Feyenoord back into the tie, and with eight minutes to go, Willem van Hannigan added a second to seal the Rotterdam side's place in the quarter-finals. Having knocked out the holders, they had announced themselves and proved that they weren't just along for the ride. Feyenoord would travel across the Iron Curtain to East Germany for the quarter-finals, where they faced Vorwärts Berlin. Once again, Feyenoord lost the first leg 1-0, but they repeated themselves in the second leg too. Goals from Kinvall and Henk Ferry took Feyenoord to a 2-1 aggregate win, and their place in the semi-finals was sealed. Feyenoord had the potential to face Don Revy's Leeds or Jock Stein Celtic in the semi-finals, but instead the draw would put them up against Eastern European opposition again. They would face Legia Warsaw in the semi-finals. A 0-0 draw in the Polish capital meant it was all on the second leg, but once again, Feyenoord scored twice. Goals from Van Hannigan and Franz Hazel sent Feyenoord into the final, where they would be up against Celtic. Feyenoord had faced disappointments in their domestic competitions, with the legendary Ajax side led by Rhinus Michels and Johan Cruyff sealing a double for the Amsterdam side. Celtic, as champions three years before, were the favourites for the tie. Jock Steen's side were highly confident they could win a second European Cup, and Happel needed to work out how he could contain them. Happel stated, I know Celtic will come at us for 90 minutes. My problem is how to contain them and still create openings for ourselves. Celtic manager Jock Steen was confident of victory, telling his players after their semi-final win over Leeds, 
Fire North have not the calibre, the fitness, or the fight of Leeds. A quick goal, and we should do it. The one big danger to us is ourselves. If Jimmy Johnston in particular is on song, we should win. Feyenoord travelled again to San Siro for the final, preparing to make history. There were initially doubts about the game. Workers in Italy had been on strike nationwide, but shortly before the game, a negotiation would allow the game to go ahead. The game kicked off in front of over 50,000 fans in Milan. Happel had done a lot of work on how to keep the Scots out. He ensured that Celtic's main threat, winger Jimmy Johnston, was double marked at all times, and his threat was nullified. The midfield trio of Franz Hazel, Wilhelm van Hannigan, and Wim Janssen were proving hard for Celtic to deal with. However, Celtic took the lead in the 30th minute, with a free kick being laid off to Tommy Gemmel, who blasted the ball into the net. Only two minutes later though, a looping header from Marinus Israel levelled the scores. Upon levelling the game, it was Feyenoord who went on top. They started to dominate play and search for a winner. Nothing happened that could separate the teams however, and the game would enter extra time. One moment was all that was needed to decide where the European Cup was heading. In the 117th minute, a long ball was played into a Celtic box, and Ove Kindle tried to run onto it, up against Celtic captain Billy McNeil. McNeil stumbled, and in a desperate attempt to save his side, tried to punch the ball. Kindle, however, instead of appealing for a penalty, advanced. McNeil was on the floor, and his attempted punch of the ball hadn't stopped it falling for Kindle. The Swede continued with the ball and lobbed it over the on-rushing Evan Williams and into the net. Feyenoord were ahead, with only three minutes to go. Celtic was shocked, and they were unable to recover to find an equaliser. The game finished 2-1. Feyenoord were the first ever Dutch team to win the European Cup. Captain Rhinus Israel lifted the trophy high, whilst his players were surrounded by photographers. Celtic, despite heavy expectations to win, was sporting in defeat. Ernst Happel said, I felt we deserved to win, we made more chances, but I was pleased with the way Mr Steen accepted it. He was one of the first to congratulate me. This is sportsmanship. Feyenoord returned to Rotterdam and paraded the trophy proudly as adoring fans lined the streets. The victory was the start of something special for Dutch football. Fellow Dutch side Ajax would win the next three European Cups, and whilst Feyenoord have not won the European Cup again, they would capture the UEFA Cup in 1974. Feyenoord have won many honours since the European Cup in 1970, but it is unlikely that they will ever quite reach these heights again. Their victory though helped to open up the European Cup, with many new winners of the tournament emerging over the next decade, after dominance from a select few sides before. Their victory may not be as renowned as other successes in the European Cup, but defeating holders AC Milan on the way to pipping a legendary Celtic side to the European Cup was a fantastic underdog tale that the Feyenoord faithful remember fondly to this day.